I'm hoping I can stay between a half hour. I am a professor, and so a lot of times I get stuck, and I think, oh, this is really interesting outcome. But I'm going to try to avoid that now. I'm actually going to use part of your, one of the things you actually mentioned in your book. Uh, I was I'm reading her books, and she mentions in a part where your view of America before you come here, and then how different it is when you actually get here. Now, anyone know why I'm actually I'm actually starting with that? You know what I'm talking the chapter I'm talking about, right? The reason I'm actually mentioning this is this. First of all, it's one of the things everyone knows, is everyone's an individual. If you think about it, everyone here has a different way to look at it, the world, based on where you are. And a lot of times people get stuck writing and doing stuff because they know that it's like this based on what they've read and seen and everything. How many of you have read a book and they have a character that has some similarities to you. And as you're reading it, you just think, okay, this person has no idea what this person is over here. If you haven't, you haven't read enough books. <laughs> uh, the truth is, there's actually a market for everyone. And that's actually what I'm saying. When, when which niche market is? Niche market is pretty much this. There's someone looking for your book. There's someone looking for the story only you can tell. And it doesn't, and a lot of people will get stuck and it's like, okay, you know, come on. It, so it will, who cares what I have to say? I, I'll use myself. I'm uh, a Latino author who's a martial artist who travels. How many people here travel? <laughs> Everyone, you know, one way or another. But that actually is one of the niche markets. Traveling is your market, if that's what you're writing about. How many of you speak Spanish besides me? Being a Spanish speaker is a niche market. You won an award for it. <laughs> All of us have actually a lot of markets that we can actually tap. And that's one of the big things that I'm going to talk about. And I do have the uh, this written down so I don't get lost. But before I actually do this, I'm going to tell you where this, actually, where this idea came from. Uh, a few years ago, I was talking to a colleague who teaches creative writing. And I said, he asked me, he said, how are you doing with your writing? And I said, well, I've made about, I think at the time, five, 600 this year. You know, nothing. He laughs and he says, you don't know how much an author makes. And he sent me an article which t told me that most professional authors, most professional novelists won't make more than 500 is the article he sent me. So if you reached over $500 based on your not writing, you're past the average. Well, as I kept on looking at it, I found less and less. And what I found is, uh, on average, traditional publisher, published authors will make less than $1,000 a year on their, on their uh, books. Uh, what they found is less than 80% of self-published will make less than a thousand a year. And here's actually one thing to tell you: if you're actually making a thousand dollars a year on a book via traditional publishing, that means uh, you're averaging a book sale of about 83.33 a uh, a month. Now, here's actually something fun, interesting to think about: if your book sells for twenty dollars at a retail. When you actually look at how much you get back after, after everything, you'll probably make about one dollar per book. Now I know this is kind of this may be one of those things where it's like, wow, uh, that's really low. But the thing you have to think of is this: when you're actually dealing with, first of all, think of selling your book. If your book sells for twenty dollars and you're selling it to a bookstore, the bookstore is going to pay, pay, I think it's twenty percent. The publisher, the printers have to make their money. And so what you're actually seeing is you're seeing a really big cut. So one of the things I'm saying is if you're looking at, at this as, hey, I'm going to be rich, well, there are the people who do make it. Now, one of the funny part, things that I found is, well, you're making less than $1,000 a year as a professional publisher, as a professionally published author. One of the things that's happening is your book is not the only place you're making money. What I mean by that is this. How many of you have ever talked at a seminar? I'm looking at you because I figure you have to. Mm. If you talk at seminars, a lot of times, what do they do? So they sell your book. Oh, well, that goes into your book sales. But also, they'll pay you a little bit. Well, they give you a little stipend to be able to, you know, show up to the seminar, or whatever you're actually doing. And so, seminars are actually one of those things where, you, yes, you're going to be making more money. But guess how you get to do a seminar? Those of you who have done seminars, taught seminars before, how were you able to get to teach a seminar? Oh, 
Quest too. Well, when you did, when you're you, a published author. Published author is one of them. The other thing, though, is when you when you uh, were in a seminar, what, what were you talking about? What are you talking about? Your whatever you are. I mean, your series or your book or whatever you're producing. You think you're an expert in yeah. something. You're an expert in something, and that's actually one of the things I'm going to talk about a little bit. And what, and it's going to be what makes someone an expert. But before we even get into that, I want you guys to think about. If you want to sell, what you have to know is where are the people who buy who buy books. Now, traditionally, people would go to bookstores and say, "Oh, this is where we buy books." Well, now, what I found is this: over forty percent of all print books are sold online. Uh, E-books are print uh, print books. Some sources go as far as seventy percent of all book sales going online. Now, think about this: if your book is not sold online, you're only selling to about thirty percent of your of anyone. Uh, one of the things I actually found of all online book sales, 64 are uh, from Amazon. There's actually some that say that 40 to 50 percent of all print books are from Amazon, depending on the article I found. Now, right away, people lights should be going off. Why? If you want to sell money, if you want to make money selling books, where do you want to be? Amazon. Some sort of Amazon, some sort of online really. So here's actually the thing I thought was interesting. The big book chains make less than 15% of all book sales. Now, here's the funny part. How many of you work hard, have worked hard trying to get your book into a big chain bookstore? Nobody? No. Not hard? Well, there aren't very many anymore. There, there There's only there, like one. Right. There aren't many <laughs> anymore. And what you're dealing with is you're dealing with, if you're looking at online sources versus big book sales, you're actually talking about 70% versus 15%. Now, what's the advantage of an online bookstore for us, authors? You cut out all the marketing or the yeah. overhead. You costs. cut out the marketing or the overhead. The other thing is, well, maybe not you can help people overhead. find you. What I mean by that is this. Uh, we'll, use your, uh, we'll use your book, Carlos's book. Carlos's book uh, for you know people trying to learn Spanish, children's book. How many people would Google, OK, I want a Spanish book. Uh, for children, if you want to learn Spanish and children, if you want to teach your children Spanish, I say, sorry. None of, nobody would Google that. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing is, having an online presence is actually important, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, question. No, I was wondering, how does he sell <laughs> if nobody's looking? That's actually. Well, you said you talk about it. Yeah, I, I will. Now, who wants your book? Now, first thing I want you to pay attention to is the idea of a mass marketing book is really dying. There's a book out there for everyone. There's a book market for everyone, and very few books are going to be the one who. How, how did a friend of mine say? Not everything, you know. Google, every even people even Google, you'll find people who don't want it. So one of the things that happens is you, this whole idea that everyone's going to like you, love your book, you got to get rid of it because it's not. And the, if you are trying to get everyone, you're probably going to miss the person who really does want your book. Now, today, if you're actually trying to raise your book, I would tell you to start looking at uh, niche markets. Now, I am going to talk about pretty much the uh, niche market. It depends on a couple of things. The book, it depends on the book that's written and why it's written. Now, I'm going to use Off the Rails. This is actually one of mine. And Off the Rails is pretty much a travel novel. But it's not just a travel novel. Uh, what it, I've talked about it before. It's a travel novel, but it's also a martial art book. It's also a fantasy book in many ways. It's also a book about trains. It's also a book about California. What am I telling you with all these different things? How many niche markets have I had? actually mentioned. Are there people who like books about trains? Well, it's a big market I found out the other day. Uh, how many people like books about travel? That's actually another. Uh, sometimes there's niche markets that people don't even realize. Uh, martial artists, I was actually looking online the other day just out of curiosity because that's one that my books are sold, where my books are selling most. And I found the, that J the uh, Japan Sports Commission or something like that, I can't remember, came out that the, there are over 100 million martial, uh, 
people who do cannot make in the world. And what they found is these are upper middle class with disposable income. Mm -hmm. Usually either children of co uh, college age parents or uh, people who are college, uh, not college age, uh, children of college educated people or people who actually went to college. That's a niche market that most smart public publishers haven't even been looking at. But think about it, 100 million people out there with disposable income who are probably, you know, this is their hobby. If you have a hobby, do you like to read about your hobby? No. These are markets that people aren't looking at. And all of you have a niche market. Believe it or not, without even thinking about it, you could probably think of five or six niche markets that you would be the expert. And I'll tell you about a little bit about experts a little bit later. Now, I did, I, well, just my, I did have the series on the various things, and this one is actually a travel novel about Asia, so it, it could be for, uh, for anyone in, uh, interested in Asia. It has the uh, idea of grief, it has the martial law novel again. And one of the things I noticed is that's the smallest market, and it's also underserved, meaning most people aren't even looking at them. Think about this. Think of yourself. Don't look at me. Look at yourself. How many markets are there out there you can actually fit, especially those that not many people are writing for? Is there a market for immigrants to the U.S.? That is your book. <laughs> Mine there is, but then they are out there. I need the book published elsewhere. It, it, here, it's actually not published. It's getting the book seen elsewhere. And I'm, that, that I'm going to tell you about a little bit later. The thing is, if you actually look at these small markets, let's say the market is 10,000 people, but nothing has been written for them. Those 10,000 people are looking for that. Market. Okay, so here's a question. Yeah. We now talk, we, we've talked about all these little markets that you can actually come, about, come across. But let's talk about this. Why would someone read your book versus someone else's? Big thing is what I actually told you. Who's an expert? Actually, if it was show, if it was show of hands, everyone's hands should have shut up. <laughs> because everyone is an expert in something that and a lot of times you don't even realize it. Now, what makes someone an expert versus someone else is actually kind of funny. A lot of times, an expert is an expert because someone else said they were an expert. What I mean by that is this. Watch the news, but sometimes you'll have... You did psychiatry, is that correct? I'm not a psychologist. Psychologist. How many times have they, oh, this is an expert in psychology, and you hear the guy talk, and you find this guy has no understanding of basic psychology. Why was he made an expert? The answer? Sometimes they have a bachelor's and that's it. Sometimes they don't even have that. They're an expert because they claim to be an expert in psychology. That's it. If you look at the news, if you look at these experts in the news, most of them don't have, even have degrees. Could you go open the door for Because I'm Most people don't even have degrees. Thank you. In clock. He's getting he's good. Okay. Most people don't even have degrees in what they're claiming to be experts. I teach in Christian in a community college. And one of the things I'm realizing is people have brought in articles written by people. Some of them actually are doctors, but they're not doctors in nutrition. Now imagine this. Imagine, well, I know you did journalism, so I'm going to use you. <laughs> imagine someone saying, oh, I'm an expert in journalism, never did anything in journalism, except they showed up. And so they start talking about how a journalist is supposed to write, but they themselves have never been published in journalism. Mm -hmm. You're laughing. You've seen that before. Yeah. The reason is, they are actually selling themselves as the, the expert. All of you are your own experts. And how do you develop, the problem is you need to develop your credibility. Now, who are you? Who are you to write the story you're writing? Now, it sounds kind of crazy. Okay, well obviously, you know, for some people, you know, you're having, uh, you've been working in psychology. A Spanish speaker, educate, you know, you've taught education. Your book is actually from some of the, someone coming from Kenya to the US. Obviously, you're an expert, but you have to actually get that word out. I am the expert because I have done this. It's that one thing that you know a lot of people forget. If you think about it, are you an, what are you an expert in? And that's what, that's what you're actually trying to do with your story, is show, yes, I am an expert. 
You are a professional dancer. You are an expert in dance. Okay, so why should you be the expert? Why, why your book? Why write? Why sell yourself as the expert? The simple answer is because if you don't, someone else will. And a lot of these people won't necessarily do it. Well, here's the thing. Where do you find your audience now? You know, we're talk talking about, okay, you've got to make yourself an expert. You've got to find the, well, how, where do you find your audience? Well, the one I want to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finding your niche. Now, first of all, there's actually a lot of groups out there. I'm going to use you, and I'm going to uh, mention Facebook. If you go to Facebook, how do you, how, do, you do a lot of Facebook? Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm not on Facebook oh. anymore. I got kicked off of Facebook. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're on Facebook, I look, I yeah. Facebook. I look so around for, look, here's the thing, it's on Facebook. You can actually look for groups about immigrants to the U.S., people dreaming of coming to the U.S. I'm just using that because of your book. And hey, you know what? That's part of your market. You can actually send little parts of your book, just excerpts, and say, hey, you know, for those of you who are coming to the U.S., I've actually written this, and I want to know what your opinion is. Now, guess what? Everyone likes to give. Likes? Yeah, everyone <laughs> loves giving their opinion. Okay. Opinions. Not, advice. Not likes. Uh, advice. So here's the thing. On Facebook, you can actually go to different groups and actually ask people, hey, look, you know, I'm writing a book, or I wrote a book on moving to the U.S. I wrote a book on uh, teaching people uh, how to read Spanish for bilingual education. Uh, I wrote a book on psychology. And there's actually a lot of psychology people out there, and they'll argue about you. And that's actually one thing that people that people forget. Even if people are telling you you have no idea what you're talking about, as long as they're talking, that's actually a big a good thing. If you don't believe me, think of the Kardashians. I don't know what they do, but apparently it's enough to make money. Well, here's here's actually another thing to remember. All of you have friends. If you don't have friends, go out, make some. <laughs> no, all jokes aside, everyone has friends. If not friends, people you know. You can get your friends involved and tell them, hey, look, you know, I'm going to be doing something. Now, at the same time, I know you, uh, at least three of us have done book reviews, book signing. When you do those, take as many pictures as you can. Publish them everywhere. Show people, hey, look what I did. Look how proud I'm doing. So the thing is, it's your friends can actually get and ask your friends to promote your stuff. Reason is you're actually seeing stuff. Now the other thing I tell people is, you always want to give something to get something. What I mean by that is this: How many of you have gone? We talked about seminars. If you do a seminar, even if you don't get paid for the seminar, it's great to do it. Why? Exposure. It's not you just put exposure. it down on your. You put it down in your resume. CV. You also are going back to your Facebook and putting that so everyone can see yes. how important you are. The other thing that's happening is this. How many of you have gone to a seminar or you know, a presentation, and the person who's presenting says, oh, after this presentation, I'm going to be signing my book here. What happens? There's a huge line. Hey, yes, you gave the seminar for free. But what you're, sell what you're actually selling is yourself. And they can get a souvenir of the self. Okay, how many of you blog? Okay, I, I've done it, I stopped because of other, I decided to try something else. Does it work to promote yourself? It does, but it takes a lot of work. It does, it takes a lot of work, but you can actually use uh, stuff like Facebook, Instagram, and, and I'm going to use you because psychology again. You could write an article on uh, what's happening right now. I honestly have just turned off the news for the last <laughs> couple of years. But if you think of what's happening in San Diego the, uh, with the hepatitis uh, A, well, there's, there was someone who talked about how people are canceling their vacations in San Diego because of hepatitis A. We can talk about the psychology of why people are taking A infectious disease that really pretty much for a tourist wouldn't be a problem and canceling their uh, canceling their travel plans. We can talk about the psychology of anything that happens. Uh, you think of all the events that are happening in the world. Uh, anything from what Trump tweeted yesterday to uh, what's happening in city council today. 
And you can actually write about just the psychology of why someone would do something. And again, you're giving this away for free, but you're promoting yourself. And this can actually go into all your social media. So people are going to read you, and not just read you, but they're going to go back to a link on that. Now, the way I actually I do is I quit doing blogs because I found most people are not necessarily literate. And I decided to go for the uh, uh, vlogs. How many of you have used YouTube? Okay, think about it. You, oh, you have actually TV shows on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you have people who've made high quality entertainment on YouTube. And that's actually one of the big things. Now, anyone remember, I'm gonna go back to this. Does anyone remember the, uh, seeing the black and white TV shows, the Colgate Hour? Back in, like, I think it was the 40s, the toothpaste Colgate sponsored one hour of a variety show. What does a variety show have to do with toothpaste? Nothing but advertising. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> But what they were trying to do is getting that name, Colgate. Mm -hmm. You do a YouTube, it's to get your name out. You can give this away and it's free. And you can put links to your Twitter accounts, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever you have. You can actually ask your friends, hey, you know, like my page, share it. And you can use that to promote your review and your books. Think about that. Imagine if I use your book. Imagine this. Imagine. She's selling her book here. She does a 10 minute presentation. And every so often, oh, you know, yeah, in my book, in my book, in my book. What's she done for the 10 minutes? Does it matter what she's talked about? What's she doing? She's promoting her book. It's a 10 minute advertisement. And the people who are looking at this are actually looking for your advertisement. Now, as this comes up over and over, if you think of psychology, you can actually, you know, like I said, do a 10 minute presentation on YouTube. You don't even need that much. You can do it on a cell phone like that. And that's all you need. You present it, you pop it in, and you're done. And so this is actually one of the ways you can get it. You pr you're promoting yourself. At the same time, you use other things to promote each other. If you're, like I said, if you're doing uh, the story of an immigrant, you can find Facebook and tell them, look, I just did this. I'm talking about my book, which is based on this. Can you guys watch it and tell me what you think? Again, ask for opinions. Even if they don't like it, it's great. Now, one of the other things that's important is this. Reviews. And one of the things we've all had a problem with is getting people to review our books. What's actually funny is sometimes you have people who read your book, but then they never write the review. And they tell you how much they love the book. One of, the, one of the things I will tell you with the reviews on Amazon is you can actually copy them or put a link and put them on your Facebook, put them on your Instagram, and anytime you get a new review, I just got a new review. Does it matter if it's a, it doesn't matter if it's a five point review or four point or three point? No, what you want is people to see that, even if it's a one. You can say, look, I don't know if this review is fair. Could anyone tell me what they think? Again, mm -hmm. pop the idea of Hmm? I never thought about putting my reviews there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's great. I mean, you think about it, especially if you can ask people for, for opinions. Now, I talked about a lot of these, and this is why I never use PowerPoint when I lecture. I always go ahead of myself. But in YouTube, like I said, you're, you're pretty much creating your own pitch. You're creating your own uh, Colgate Hour. And it's actually pretty relatively simple to get a fan page. Go for your friends. Try to make uh, one of the things if you do that. Also, try to make sure that you... We're at 24 minutes. I'm at 24 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Halfway. So, almost done. Mm -hmm. okay. I would like Just giving you time to check. Thanks. I know. So one know. of the things is that, that mm -hmm. is actually a good way to actually look. And like I said, you're promoting yourself. You're trying to find your audience wherever it can be. If it's on... Like I said, the nice thing about Facebook is you have groups that do everything. I mean, you can have a group that does travel. Go to them. You actually have a local author. You have actually... Not just local author groups, but you also have... Specific authors. I found a when I was doing this. I found a women's authors group. Mm -hmm. I found a uh, Latino author group. Mm -hmm. I found uh, actually I found a gay authors groups. You mm -hmm. can actually go to all these different things. Now, here's something that people actually forget about. I'll do this quickly. That's the value of independent bookstores. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I showed you how little money is actually coming in there, but don't forget how valuable these things are. It's only about 6% of all of total book sales are going to be there, but there's a lot of benefits. First is, it's a mutualistic, uh, it's a mutualistic thing because if you think about it, if you have a bookstore, what do you, have, what do you need? Books. Books. If you put your book on consignment with the bookstore, you're giving them something to put on their shelf. If they sell it, that's great, they pay you back. If not, okay, well they have an inventory. And the nice thing about both of those is, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. I don't know, there are some that will charge you, but for most part, if you talk to a, a small bookstores, they'll do it for free. Okay, I get, in, I get an inventory, I don't have to pay for it. There are benefits. First, you get for you, is you get paid. Now this actually varies, uh, it ranges between 40 to 60 percent of what your books are being sold at to, sold as. So again, if you sell your book for $20, that's 10 bucks. A lot better than if it's sold at $20 uh, anywhere else. The other thing is advertising. Biggest advertisement is this. If your book is on a bookshelf, take a picture of it and put it on Facebook or Instagram. And what you say is, look at this, my book is in a bookstore. Mm -hmm. what, it, what this does is it gives you a uh, credibility. You like it, so that's there. You also have something you can post on all your social media. Again, promote yourself like there's no tomorrow. And it's like I said, just being on a shelf, if it sells, well, you make a little money off of it. I will say one of the things I found is whenever I've done these, uh, it does do give uh, Anytime I sell a book in a bookstore, it seems it sells better online right afterwards. Hmm. Okay, other things to remember first is this. Uh, you, you might be able to sell to someone. You might be able to sell to your best friend, but quality is important. And that's one of the things you're saying, you know, you, oh, you found some errors. Yes, it's important to catch all the errors. Also remember though, I've seen books that have been through 15 editions and they still have errors in it. So while well, you're gonna find the errors and you're gonna do different things, Know that that's always going to be there. Second is regardless to how you how, who your publisher is, there are some people who publish through traditional publishers. There's some people who do uh, Amazon. I'm actually a fan of Create Space because I figure out if I'm going to do the work, I want to get more money for my stuff. It doesn't matter who you are, who you publish with. You talk to people who have been published. Uh, actually, you jeez, uh, her name escapes me. The one who did a hundred movies you should watch before you grow up. Hers was a traditional publisher, mm -hmm. but what you notice is she's constantly promoting herself. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you, you have to do that these days. Yeah, because... the publisher's not going to do anything for you, so you know it doesn't matter who. The other thing is, all news is good news. Remember, if someone's willing to talk to you, even if it's bad mouthing your book, they took time to bad mouth your book. <laughs> the other thing is, reviews are gold, but only if people see them. So when you get a review. Put it on Facebook, put it on, and have people look at it and mention it. And I think that's all I'm going to talk about. I, I wanted to do half hour, so I did that. Are there any mm -hmm. questions? I, I tried to do it quick so I didn't bore anyone. Yeah. I know what my niche market is. Mm -hmm. It's the women, uh, mature women. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of them don't go online. They even have problems uh, with the reviews. Someone who emailed me a review. Mm -hmm. and tell me, you know what, I tried and tried, I couldn't do it because they don't buy things online. Mm -hmm. So she tell me, go and this is my review, go and post it. Of course, I can't do that. Yeah. So, um, what do I do? What? You know, I, I will say, if it, if it is a women's group, you can't, there are actually magazines and everything for women's group, but that's not actually, I will tell you, that's not your uh, need. You have a bigger needs market available. And one of the things I would tell you is to consider looking at universities even mm -hmm. for uh, African American studies. Be yeah. Yeah, because that is one of the things that we will get stuff out. Now, if someone doesn't have an Amazon account, if someone's not buying online, mm -hmm. you can write, have them write your review and put it on Do a Facebook account for your for your book, and you can put all the reviews there as well. And you can link your Facebook account to your Amazon account too. So if oh, someone likes it. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's the other thing I need to learn. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know, you, you talked about the consignment books, mm -hmm. and somebody mentioned it to me, and I went online, but there's not many of them. Eight books. 
Uh, one of the things I will find with consignment books and with small bookstores is books, small bookstores won't promote it that they do this. But you go to uh, Upstart Pro, for instance, is one where. How do you come back? I'm sorry, where? Upstart Pro and Seaport Village. If you go talk to them, they'll put your book on consignment for them, and they'll let you do a book signing with them too. Now, sometimes it goes great, but you have to promote yourself. Uh, last time I did it, uh, the last two things I did, I I haven't had time to promote myself, and so it showed. If you promote, I mean, the thing is, you have to promote yourself in as many places as you can. Uh, so yeah, you, I mean, like I said, you can walk to almost any bookstore and say, "Hey, look, I have this book. I'd like to leave two copies with you on consignment." Most of them will say yes. It's like I said, for them, it's free. It's free. Mm -hmm. if, it, and if it doesn't sell, it, you know, they don't have enough room free because they have too much. Well, if they, it's not selling, they'll make call you up and say, it's time to pick up your books. But okay, you know, at least it was on the shelf and you can put pictures on it. <laughs> uh, but here's, here's actually the other th the one thing. Uh, it, yes, it, it, the big thing is it's up to you and you have to go up and talk to people. I will mention that there are bookstores that will do it quickly, uh, and not just do it quickly, but will actually take your books and they'll be on the shelf that day. Okay. Uh, and also let people know when you do a book signing, or if you're actually doing a presentation. Uh, a lot of times, if you, it seems it's easier, I hate to say it, it seems it's easier to do it on uh, smaller channels, and now everything's owned by large corporations. So you have to actually look at the small channels to see which ones, a lot of times it will be internet, they will be, uh, for instance, a lot of the Spanish speaking ones, while they are big, they're not getting all the big names, so you can actually, especially if you speak Spanish or another language, you can actually talk and get on there. If you can also, you know, if you have a YouTube channel, you can actually do something with it. I talked to you guys about this. Mm -hmm. You can talk to people on their YouTube channels, and that's just free promotion for YouTube. Do you think for advertise promotion like Facebook? Or Amazon? I have. I didn't see a benefit to it in myself. I heard, and I've heard people say, oh, it helps because they put you up a lot, but it's finding that niche. And if you can get it what they call organic, you're better off. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you go to a site which is, uh, you know, immigrant people trying to find the immigrant story, you're going to do better. Uh, actually, you know, what I would tell you is even. Look at uh, you know success. You know the uh, story of a successful immigrant would actually be a good one. And, you know, there's a few of us who can do that uh, because that it's more for a lot of people. It's like oh, the successful immigrant. It's a lot more happy than the uh, wow, the guy who uh, you know was not successful. Uh, but yeah, I mean the thing is, there's actually a lot of groups. Facebook is, I think it's one of the most valuable things, and I would actually tell people to make their own YouTube because it's free. And you don't really have to do much on it. Uh, any other questions?